Welcome back guys to Remax episode 14. This is part 3 of the show. We have many guests today and uh, joining us with, a, with us today is Caitlin. Hi Caitlin, how are you? Hey, what's up? Um, what have you been up to lately, I guess is the general question. Um, I well, I came to California for BlizzCon and now I'm still here. And Kevin, Rotterdam just let me his PC so I can stream his old one. So. Oh, it's so nice of him. It's such a I bro. know, right? The one that he didn't stream for months for because he couldn't stream with. Kevin. Yeah, yeah. Well, I he was only able to lend it to me because Nathan made him a new Roddy PC. So. Oh. Well, good I guess. Nathan too. And it, but, so I vicariously gave you a PC to stream. With, so it's all good. Yeah. yeah. I know uh, Henry Bars. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's a good. good <laughs> so how does it feel to live in the U.S., the better part of North America? I made a joke on Twitter saying like, wow, U.S. really is the best country in the U.S.A. And people thought I was serious. <laughs> like, they didn't get I was joking. I, yeah. like, I like the U.S. a lot. I'm here for a month, so like a lot, but... Mm -hmm. That's cool. Um, just to address a little bit, because a lot of people are going ham, uh, the questions on Twitter and Reddit will be answered uh, right after the WCS Run of, uh, run of 8 talk. Uh, we're going to talk quickly about the matches, then we're going to get to the questions, and then we'll be on a merry way. Uh, so let me pull up the results here. I actually, Before you yes. talk about the results, we need to talk about how fucking phenomenal that stage was. Like, all bugs aside, that was the coolest shit I've ever seen in my life. I don't know if I'll get in trouble, but I was told it's worth like two, three millions, and they actually <laughs> bought... They actually bought the equipment, so they're going to be reusing it for... Uh, I hope so. It was really yeah. cool. I so, like, it. if you think about I that, that... You know what's so good about that? The Hearthstone stage was 300000 So if the StarCraft one's, like, that much more, that's right on. <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Uh, yeah, yeah but I don't Caitlin, have... Caitlin, you're the girl. Size. You're not supposed to compare dick sizes but, here, you know? But, but I don't... <laughs> whatever, whatever. We all have E penises. I just, I just want one of those steins from the Hearthstone stage. That's all. Those looked really yeah. good, yeah. Rip! But... No, seriously, for those who didn't see the stage, the quick uh, Dylan didn't read it. was like, if you ever saw screenshots of it or something, you only sadly got to see the still image. It was it a was stage sick. that was very active. Dude, they changed the... Okay, so first off, it's a white stage for those who didn't know. What they were doing, there was, there was like 24 projectors going at a time, projecting Project images Mapping. onto the stage. Yeah. And what was really cool was like, okay, you've got the player sides, one becomes a little more terror, one becomes a little more Zerg, whatever. But they had things matching the map. And then like when the player who won, like their race would take over. So like if Zerg would win, Creep would just go all over the like the stage. It was so cool. You, you know why they did that? Because StarCraft is such a boring game that people, you know, they needed their attention span to, to stick on something. But no, that was the coolest thing. Actually, that, that was one of the reasons why I watched any of the matches was just for the stage, man. So... I had to witness it. So here's this is, this is something that I really like because this is one of the most unique ways you could possibly use a setup like this in relation to uh, StarCraft 2. There's nothing like this that's even possible to do with other games because um, except maybe like Counter-Strike because you know you usually only play on one board or the board doesn't change that much and like Hearthstone or you know League of Legends obviously it's always Summoner's Rifts but for StarCraft they had a set in case people didn't notice, it didn't, wasn't just changing. They had a specific set for every single map. It was yep. part of our introductions when we did our rehearsals, when we did the technical rundown. Every time a player was introduced, their race would build over their half of the set. So you guys saw, like, it would warp in for a Protoss player when life was winning. like, And, and then, of course, once you whoever won the game, their set took over the rest of the board, you know, the rest of the, the stage. So this was, uh, this was, like, a really well thought out and... The, the people who actually worked on it, I can't quite remember. It was uh, the, the company that actually designed it was something outside, something V something. I can't remember the full name, but uh, they did a fucking sick job with it. And it was it was really surreal. If you were there, like you really felt like you wanted to reach out and touch the grass on overgrowth. It was pretty yeah. sick. All yeah, we I need love the maps have the transitions too, not just the race. Yeah. 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 All we needed was 3D glasses, man, so we could literally reach to Yo, it. Like, I, I seriously, like, when they swapped to King Sejong, it just starts snowing. Like, that's so cool. Like, it wasn't something where they just, like, faded to black or something. Like, it starts snowing. The snow comes up from the bottom. Like, it was so cool, guys. Yeah, yeah me and Graham felt like we were back at home when home still snows in November <laughs> or December or even January. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Yo, actually, another really cool thing was, I gotta say, like, they did a great job with the sound for that arena, too. Like, when a tank would fire, oh, fuck, it, like, resonated in you. Like, oh, everything yeah. they did about that live setup was so well done. Dude, Vainling's morphing would scare me. Because, you know, like, you kind of hear that off-screen of it sometimes? <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, my God. <laughs> Yeah, if I had uh, only one criticism to give to their setup is that there was no room for uh, a face shot of the players. And I think they could have made some room for it. Uh, what do you think, Nantanius? So, for face shots, um, obviously, <laughs> they they wanted to have something that they could do a little bit with it. Like, they always have the GoPros in the booths and whatever. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just a, it's partially a limitation of the way that it was all set up yeah. so that you could get... The, so that the stage would work while also having an okay like experience for the players you're just not really possible to get a cameraman in in there and obviously the players are about uh four so meters off the ground so you're not really uh, you're not you're not really able to get a you're not going to get a camera up there like you the jib is all you got so like there were, I mean, I mean, they had, they like, they swung it by the player booths during the introductions, as far yeah. as I recall. But there's only so much that you can you can do that. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. That's the only criticism I have to yeah. give about the stage, and that's not a bad one by any means. So, why why are you so excited, Rifkin? Oh, I was really excited because he said meters, man, <laughs> instead of feet. <laughs> oh, oh. I, uh, shout out! It only, it really, it only took living in Sweden for one month to me completely switch over to that. So you realize but, we're the superior kind, right? So I was why giggling. The, why do you think I'm using it? <laughs> I'm just saying. So I was giggling because I need to take a shot here. We had a pretty good face shot of uh, Hero <laughs> up on the main stage. Oh, yeah. The main had... screen yeah. for all of like game three or four or whatever that was. Oh, yeah. That PvP was pretty. It was like Proxy yeah. 2 gate. It was so intense. And then the, uh, the whole crowd. That's why we were booing because we couldn't see anything. I'm not yeah. saying I was booing, but uh, people were oh, booing. The thing is like, okay, like problems happen and blizzard did a great job i think of addressing this like they made that public post and like, look guys we're not gonna beat around the bush things messed up and we'll make sure it doesn't happen again um what i did like though was or to explain real quick for those who don't know there was a game where the audience did not get to see what was going on but i guess the stream could so there was a lot of questions um going on like you know why were people booing and freaking out it's because there was some some video problems for the audience to watch but the thing was like even even with how massive the downtime was and how annoying and bad the technical problems were when they happened, I still enjoyed the ever-loving fuck out of that show. Like, it was still really good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very, very good. Um, any Anything that stood out to you, Caitlin, that you want to talk before we get into the matches? Sorry, did you ask me? Uh, yes, yes. Anything oh, that stood out to you? Like, out. What did you enjoy of the, the whole thing? Anything particular? The crowd, um, the arena. I don't know if... This is kind of bad. I kind of liked how the players couldn't tell when the camera was on them because it usually wasn't on them. Mm -hmm. So I feel like sometimes we got to see some of their emotions that we wouldn't have seen otherwise. Or, um, I don't know, some like kind of interesting, funny things. Like, what were you saying, Graham? <laughs> Innovation <laughs> picking his nose and wiping it on his shirt, yeah. Did that yeah. happen for real? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, damn. All right, well, <laughs> I know there was like a streamer in another game that happened on stream and he did, he forgot and he got bullied and then he stopped streaming. All right, that's a sad oh, story. Yeah. Uh, anyway. Moving on. Yeah, moving Thanks, on. Thanks, Thanks, <laughs> Thanks, <Lester. laughs> Jesus. Anyway, MMA versus Bomber, uh, the first series of, uh, that was great, by the way, so I had more time to go check out BlizzCon and not watch that, but uh, MMA, MMA versus Bomber, Nathanius, did you see the games, any, any game yep. that stood out to you? Because it's a lot of games, so... Just get through it. I mean, it's uh, <clears throat> it was some it was some pretty decent TVT. Uh, there was a lot of that aggressive earlyishness or whatever. The so many people. The game was really weird though. Yeah, so many people were calling Bomber to win it all. Get smashed. Well, Bomber's TVT was like he was doing stupidly well all year, and you know he beat the GS, he beat a Code S semifinalist in a matchup that he had that he was already practicing for to go up against Innovation. So. Like I, most of us believed in him. Um, thinking back to like the individual maps, uh, it's it's so tricky because Bomber Bomber really didn't look like he was in the greatest position on Foxtrot as far because he didn't have as many upgrades. But like normally having a handful of extra Marines doesn't quite do it for you. And then he really forced a lot of those big drops. So I really liked his position at the start, and then 
Deadwing, Deadwing things got really weird with like the the early aggression and whatnot. And yeah, that's just it. It doesn't nothing really like particularly stands out to me that I can like think to point out. The overgrowth game though, I feel like uh, we didn't get a chance to really talk about this, or the analyst desk didn't mention it, but like. Bomber took that one fight mostly because his buildings didn't float away properly because otherwise when you have less units you have to be you just have to like try to camp with your one SCV in a main base and like rebuild a command center because Bomber didn't save any of his buildings the only reason he went for he had to he went up to the top of the map was because he only had like a couple supply depots left obviously you can't lift those off so he kind of forced himself into getting fucked uh, MMA seemed much more prepared for the base trade than Bomber did. Mm -hmm. I really liked how Bomber was scouting on Foxtrot with that empty medevac, because he scouted the double yeah. drop with that, and then he went to MMA's base with it too, and he kept scouting with it. So that was really good. I really thought he wouldn't win that one, because he was so far behind on upgrades, because uh, he kind of started his, uh, his armory a bit late, and like MMA was doing double upgrades. And there was like a time where he right-clicked his units, but you know that was the map that he got, right? Yeah. No? Yeah, yeah, Foxtrot was the one to bomb. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but Bummer, Bummer is such a good player. It's a, it's a shame that you know, everyone has to lose except the winner. Uh, Rifkin, did you watch those games or you were like walking around the convention? So I didn't get in till I think halfway through the second set, which kind of sucked because the whole the person I was rooting for and I've been very vocal about this like MMA. So when I heard MMA won, I was like I one hit a little bit pissed because I missed the matches and I was like this is Bomber, right? Of all people, everyone's calling. Bomber. Bomber. But on the other hand, like I'm sitting there like stuck in the convention center. I'm just like, yeah, <laughs> I didn't know what the fuck happened in the games, but I was just like, yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, because you're a big fan of MMA, right? He plays in yeah. your stuff. Well, not because he plays my stuff. Like he's, he's got a fun personality. He's a really good player. And every time something comes out for a map, like he's the first one to abuse the map more than trying just straight up win a game. So like from various other reasons, I really like watching MMA, but um, I don't know, just really liked MMA for these finals. He was, we made two emotes to cheer for him, for goodness sake, on our channel. So, I mean, Do you? yeah, I oh, liked you did, Oh, yeah, you did after you won the season three, right? No, I just did them because I wanted to cheer for MMA. Everyone was so <gasps> mad. They're like, why do we have stupid MMA emotes? I'm like, shut up, guys, because I like MMA. You did whatever, go away. <laughs> wow. All right, so uh, MMA ended up winning 3-1. Uh, we'll just go one by one to the run of eight matches. So next one was Classic versus Eero. And um, that's the only match I watched. I know, I have literally <laughs> zero passion, guys. Um, I don't know. But I saw you at the other ones. You were there. Uh, well, I was, yeah, I was there, but not there with my main uh, mind. Uh, but <laughs> it's just like, I don't know. Eero was so dominant, and then the pause was... I mean, you could say that about so many matches this weekend, but uh, it, he didn't look the same. And, uh, I don't know, he said, like, I told him at the after party, I'm like, why did you lose? He said, like, I'm fucking stupid, is what, uh, is what Eero said. You know, his English went that far to recognize that, uh, he derped. Uh, Nathanius, you seem to have a very strong opinion about that match. I know you were casting, I remember. Dude, I mean, Hero absolutely shrekt him, and then Classic was all like, you know, he, he fucking top-decked Ragnaros three turns in a <laughs> row with 20 mana, you know? I, this is how everyone. Uh, this is how I piss everyone off. But really, yeah. he got lucky, man. Look, if Hero doesn't move his stalker out on merry-go-round, you know, Desro, you know this. You play Protoss. I play Protoss. If you think your opponent's doing that, you keep your fucking stalker at home with your Sentry. Mm -hmm. You don't lose ten probes and then you win. Um, and then the same. Th I, I mean, I guess Hero's kind of notorious for losing important matches when it comes to two gates. But it's overgrowth. Uh. Like, of all maps, of all maps, you, you in the biggest, that, most important tournament that you're ever gonna, you're ever gonna be this far in. Like, come on. You're, you're right. Like, Overgrowth is like the map Cheese Heavens on with. Like, I've seen more from every race too. I don't know what it is Overgrowth attracts it. But what I thought was so sick was I've seen Proxy Two Gates on Overgrowth. I've never seen them in that location though. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, that's cool. What I saw of that game, of course. Yeah, <laughs> I think the biggest tragedy. No, no. Uh... Offense to the Chintas, but the biggest tragedy of the result of that match is that Eero had such a better chance at going further than Classic oh, did. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Honey. Yeah? So, yeah. yeah. I'm a big Hero fanboy, so I'm oh, gonna, yeah. I, I will take every opportunity to... Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. when he, he told me I was cute at the after party, man, my life was complete. 
I was talking to him and he's he like, said he liked my beard after Dreamhack Stockholm. We're practically nice. like married now. What? No, I'm mer no, I'm his second wife then. Um, all right, <laughs> moving on. To you could do better. You could be as maybe. Maybe probably. it's polygamy, guys. Maybe it's okay. You know. Yeah. Just... <laughs> moving on. <laughs> Come on, Nathaniels, don't be shy. All right, Sound versus Just Life. Uh, that's actually a result uh. I expected. I'm really, I never believe in Sound for whatever reason. And then sometimes he proves me wrong. Uh, Caitlin, the matches, what did you think of them? I feel like he should foregate less. Or if he's going to foregate someone, like two base foregate someone, um, maybe not someone who always goes three ash before pool blindly. Mm -hmm. And someone who makes so many queens. <laughs> then it would probably work out better. Life got really lucky, and I got lucky. He always gets lucky with these, his scouts. Right before his overload dies, he sees everything he needs to see. So he saw that robo on an overgrowth, but he probably could have guessed that Sun was going to go Immortals on that map. So mm -hmm. I don't know. It was like, seemed like life was the better player in all the games. Mm -hmm. What about you, Nathanius? Uh, I didn't think... It, there are a bunch of people that were all, like, talking about the stats for this matchup, and this is one of the reasons why in StarCraft 2, especially, more than more than I feel most games, like, you can't just take a player's uh, stats into account. If it wasn't clear enough from Bomber not losing a TVT for six months to, um... Uh, it's, like... Sans had something like a 100% win rate this year in PVZ for WCS tournaments or something like that. Or something like 98% if you took all of his maps in like the last like actual three, like 12 months. But so, and he had, a, I think, I think what was more impressive for me was that apparently he also had like a 10, he's like 10 0 in maps against life. But like San is just not that guy that comes to big tournaments like this and wins them. You know, life is. Life is the dude where you expect when it counts the most. That's when life really, you know, shows his true form. Like, I, I really didn't have a doubt in my mind going, like, watching it. I was like, I'm pretty sure life should just absolutely annihilate him. And especially after beating Zest, I didn't think it... I didn't personally think San had much of a chance. So it wasn't really a surprising like result for me. I feel because I know when life feeds Zest, there were a lot of games where we got kind of lucky. Like there was one on Overgrowth where Zest just kind of moved out with a bunch of with a stalker and a bunch of sentries, and life came and killed them all. And there was like another game too where that happened. So even though he beat Zest, I still wasn't too sure that it would be that he would do that well against Son, but. I mean, yeah. even getting lucky, beating Zest is pretty good, so... Yeah, it feels like life was the underdog for a lot of people. Um, but the thing is, it, it feels like he was one of the hardest to prepare for at this tournament. Um, only one Zerg, yeah. But n no, it's not only that, it's, it's because he doesn't play like Zerg. It's like MC doesn't play Protoss, he plays he plays his own game. And it's sort of the same with life, he plays his own games. And a lot where a lot of times Zergs would be, you know, droning up more, life would just be squeezing out extra units and just being crazy in general. So um, th those are my thoughts on it. Rifkin, any thoughts on that matchup and the results? It was weird for me because, like, San, through, like, Acer Team Story Cup and all these other things I've seen him in, he's always just, like, incredibly scary force. Where, like, when he wins, it's not, like, a 3-2. It's always a 3-0. Mm -hmm. So to see him so weak versus life, I think it gives life a lot of credit. Like, it should, if anything, impress more so that life is able to beat him. But I was just blown away by the actual score of that set. Yeah, like, I really didn't see it being 3-0. That, that kind of shocked me the most. Mm -hmm. um, Nathanius, any final thoughts? I think no. I, I already asked no. him. So. I, the thing is, the thing is, I mean, there are, Sans, are, Sans a cool guy. I waited in line with him at Starbucks after the event was over. But, <laughs> Your Starbucks you know, addiction? If, I, if you <laughs> show me, like, we go, like, if we went, if we travel back in time, actually, I think we were, had a Remax before the Burbank uh, round of 16. Like, here, well, here's what I said. Zest is the best Protoss player in the world. I'd be really surprised if he didn't make it to the finals, except for the fact that innovation could, you know, tear in him because of how, you know, oh. TVP is or whatever. So I would have called, I, Zest was like, Zest is like the player that I think should be able to win all of it, except if it weren't for the bottom half of the bracket being so stacked. Life beating him pretty much, like that for me, that's like, well, there's absolutely no fucking way he loses to San after that. Like, simple as that. Like, sorry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to throw out, um... Of the players who made it to the finals, the two were the ones that also played in my first big tournament ever, the big one. So, could you could you jump off a bridge? Rifkin, save it, esports boys. <laughs> could, could you jump off a bridge, please? Okay, just. <laughs> I'm joking. 
Oh. Yeah. I, I would I, laugh at your jokes more, Graham, if you were wearing your other hat. Oh, wait, wait, he's getting yeah, to the where's... backpack or something. No, no, I probably should have swapped. You always should have done I should have just swapped that, like, subtly during the break and seen if, like, just, uh... anyone in the audience knows. Yeah, you should have, man. You totally <laughs> let her down. Like, come on. What kind of... You're you're not a bro, Graham. You gotta work Sorry. on that marketing, man. I was scoring points on Suppy all day, you know? <laughs> <laughs> this guy. really great. <laughs> um, let me just... Go on, uh... Sorry. One up, Nate, real quick. <laughs> yeah, Nate. I, you know, they were asking you for you to drink uh, whiskey. Do you have any whiskey? Can you uh, fulfill their dreams? <laughs> no, he's got he's got a stream tonight, man. Don't not, do it to him. Not today. Not today. That's, uh, well, I mean, if I have to play on Metalopolis, maybe, but not today. Are you gonna play nice. in the uh, the qualifier? Are you casting the qualifier? What's going on with what you qualifier? today? Qualifier. Today's a stage two qualifier, dude. Yeah. Aren't you casting that? No, nobody what? asked me. Oh, that's uh, that's Kilaris and Pink. <laughs> Yeah, I don't, I don't know why they're doing the North American one too instead of Nate and Roddy. I I, I assumed it was because of BlizzCon well, or something. Nah, well, to be, the, I mean, Burbank, there's a couple right? there's a couple things. I was out of town when they did the first couple, and right now, uh, Kev is. First of all, first of all, it doesn't cost the uh, Calaris like that. He's an employee of ESL. If they want Kevin and I to do it, they have to pay us to go do it. So. Oh, so there's actually money involved, is what you're saying. Yeah, I think so. But uh, yeah, Kev, it doesn't matter because Kev's on. Kev's in Germany now, so or the yeah. Netherlands. He flew. He flew yesterday, so it wouldn't be possible. Okay. Uh, so the last series. Sorry, guys, for the messed up overlay. I'm just trying to get Caitlin some uh, love with the twitters. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah, 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 people complain. So I'm a man. I'm a man of Is the people. Is there a capital K? Are you oh, really good at Oh my god! I, com I, I copy pasted no, from Twitter. No, this is good. This is good. Don't put a capital K. Okay. Yeah, okay. I, 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 nice. I thought I messed up. And I was this doesn't make sense. I don't fucking. Understand. This is worse Why? than girls who spell her names all dumb. Like, she's just so obsessed with a lowercase yeah. K. Dude, well, lots of people have lowercase Ks. Like, look at Innovation's name. That's way more annoying than a lowercase yeah. K. Yeah, Innovation has those lowercase Ks in his name. Like, Yeah, but isn't Caitlyn your name, though? Moving on. So, But isn't Caitlyn your name, though? Uh, I could. Brent has a lowercase e. That's his name. Really? So his parents dirt? Well, no, not in real life. I mean, that's what God damn, Starcraft just... is real life. All right. So innovation versus stage. Uh, the, okay. So apparently, a little bit of criticism. Even though Nathanius might stab me later. Uh, apparently, his keyboard was fine the whole time. Wanna deny? Explain? Elaborate? Nate? What? No, no, no! I heard, I heard like he he just wanted to finish the match out, but they didn't have, he didn't couldn't get a like an actual whatever his keyboard was, they couldn't get a replacement for it. But like he had like a key or two that was like busted on it, but the delays and stuff, I don't know. It was it was there was a lot of there was a lot of like different things that happened. Like I don't really want to go into details on, but basically it wasn't like there was one thing that kept happening over and over, which is one of the reasons why it was so difficult to to fix everything. Have you ever seen someone bring a backup keyboard to an event? Because when hundred thousand dollars is on the no. line, like, you'd think actually, that I'd, maybe. I actually don't think I ever have. Yeah, it hasn't, I, this, hasn't it happened before at big tournaments? One time, Nanny went was like, "Can someone please bring me a left-handed abyssus?" And it's like, "Well, who the fuck is gonna have one of those?" Like, <laughs> like I'm sure there's twenty nerds at this convention with abyssus mice or any other razor mouse, but who on earth is gonna actually like, who's gonna have a fucking uh, left-handed mouse and? When you look at a lot of these keyboards that the Korean players use, like you can't buy any of those in any store. Like the only keyboards you're gonna find in a store are like Razer, maybe Steel Series and Logitech, and Wait, probably like so Corsair. Corsair you can find yeah. nowadays. Doesn't uh, Innovation have a Razer keyboard? No, so, I, I, I think I thought he, I think all those guys use like the. No, the no, he's no, no, he's got. Yeah, he's got, well, he's oh like yeah, yeah. Leopold. Okay, yes, you guys are right. You can't buy those in any store in so, the U.S. that I've ever been to. But I don't know what Innovations was. It was something like, hmm. I don't know, but it wasn't a Philco or a Leopold. Like, okay, all keyboard stuff aside, though, there was a lot of stuff that wasn't keyboard related that happened in that series. Yeah. That I really think, like, and I know maybe Nate can't talk on it so much because he was I, involved, I, but I, like... No, no, I, I totally agree. The, the, the stress of all of that definitely did not help Innovation with pulling his head together to play out the last couple of maps. You think they should have scrapped the 2v2 Archon mode and just have the match the next day? I don't know, man. I mean, we can't go back so, in the past, but if you were to have I, I the same problem no, in the future... No, no, 
this is another thing. This is what DreamHack gets heavily criticized for, right? Like, you're kind of stuck to a schedule. And to throw in a TVT that could... Because the thing about TVTs, right? There's no set time for them. They can either be incredibly, incredibly fucking long, like a Swarm House game, or they can be really, really short. So yeah, it's really hard to, like, s- just simply say, like, time. let's do a best of five tomorrow and set. Like, it's no, not... No, but easy my man... Just- you're playing an entire year to have a chance at winning $100,000. Desert, Desert, I understand, but that's what I'm saying from a tournament organizer's perspective. It's not as easy as just saying, like, let's do this tomorrow. Yeah, but they had some free time for the 2v2, though. Doesn't matter. So there's one 2v2. That's not a best of five. Like, I get where you come from. I agree. It was I a best of five 2v2, though. L- no, listen, listen, listen. I agree 100%. It should have been done under the best case circumstances. And it should have been like priority on the players being able to play comfortably. But I bet you there's about a thousand fucking things going on behind the scenes that says otherwise. And it kind of sucks that that couldn't happen. What I really disliked about that situation though was like, you could see, like I swear, maybe it was just me like overreacting to the situation myself, but in the crowd when they had like shots of innovation, like I swear, man, it looked like he was gonna cry at some points. Like the stress of like all this going wrong it's a high intense pressure situation. Like, I don't think even a day would have actually helped that much. It would have helped, but I, I don't know. Just like you'd still be salty coming in from the next day, pissed, worried that would happen again. Like, again, there's like a million other things that go into it, but I just, ah. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I agree. I mean, I'm just doing devil's advocate, guys. Don't, don't jump to my throat. I want to live. Uh, moving on to the actual results, Teja winning 3 1. Um,. It kind of sucks that innovation didn't go further just for the storyline, but then you know Teja Teja kind of, you know, is worth. He's, he's Teja. If there's one thing that Teja has been good at doing, as pretty much Teja? his whole career, it's taking whoever you really want to win and crushing him. So. I really wanted to see <laughs> before innovation. before unceremoniously dropping out. Go on, Caitlin. Innovation had um the really strong hell that drop next style. And I really wanted to see, not him go further with it, but see how people deal with it when it's already kind of scary looking. But it seemed like Teja was kind of shutting him down. Like on King Sejong, he got air control because Innovation made like three Banshees and Teja had a bunch of Vikings. So it just all got shut down before he could do that. So that was too bad. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't I look really too... Know how to deal with it. I, I can't even look too deep into those games, especially considering all the... You know, all the the technical difficulties that would keep you from, like, focusing on one thing for a long period of time. The Nimbus map, like, the first map was, like, it's like, okay, that was probably the best game of the series, at least in my opinion. Um, but, yeah, that was actually kind of, that was actually a pretty cool game to see because I, I really felt like uh, Tasia was just pounding away at Innovation all game long, but he, Innovation just didn't really make any macro mistakes because normally if I'm playing mech versus bio and the guy's up on his fourth before I like have my fourth even landed and he's saturated on it like I feel like I'm totally fucked because I'm never going to be able to stop their momentum but innovation did do a phenomenal job of that with the first map of that series mm-hmm. for some of you guys that don't know uh Tejo versus innovation last year in WCS was known for a very long time to be the best DVT series uh Matinius, would you say Obviously, with the technical problems, that's the answer is probably going to be no. But would you say it lived up to the expectations? I think it could have. Um, you know, like I said, it's it's kind of out of our hands. Uh, yes. You know, as especially as commentators, we're just we're just there. Like we they don't we don't know anything at least at least especially during it as far as what's going on. But uh, the first game looked very promising, and I I think if the if that if it had been like smoothed out after that then maybe we're looking at that but it's like mm-hmm. especially you know because you talk to any of the guys that are that actually been pro gamers and i'm sure uh if you know if hawker scarlet were were still here to, to ask them about it but what? you know but you know what i mean like they've been a, you've been in situations <laughs> where you're on a very big stage yes you know, i'm joking yes. Stage, yes and you have a lot of you know you've they, these people have all, i think something like a hundred plus thousand people watching them and you know, have the full fucking crowd. They're like barely any room for anyone else to come in, and you're like trying really hard to focus on this game, and then something you know something comes up, and you have to sit there for really really long periods of time. Like I we you know, it's uh, it's really stressful um, for everybody involved. You know, even you know especially us, we have to sit there and you know we have to obviously if we lose our shit, then everything really goes to hell because we're supposed to keep everything together on mm-hmm. camera at least. So like, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, there was, there was like a lot of, yeah, it was, you know, it's just one of those things like sometimes 
sometimes things go nuclear nuclear in one way or another and uh you got to make the best of it but i can't say that it helps the players at all it made it more difficult for us to stay excited because you know we're like are we about to go into another pause or not but Mm -hmm. uh yeah, for me, it's part of doing my job, but for them, it's really messing with them trying to do their thing. Mm-hmm. Just uh, before we finish the WCS roundup and just get a question or two, uh, since we're down and dirty already, Netanyahu, uh, I mean, you, you, you don't have to answer, but a lot of people were, what the fuck? Why is Hug joining the call? What is wrong with you? Stop. Right. Uh, what the hell? Okay, I messed up the overlays. What I think the... he wanted. Okay, I wasn't sure if he was like going to answer the call about being on pressure and technical difficulties. He's like, yeah, Desert, you don't fucking know anything. Like, shut up. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I don't know if he'll want back in, but uh, anyway, so uh, oh, you misclicked. All right, so um, I there was a little bit of criticism. Uh, you know, uh, Moonglade got chose for the panel over in Control. But then Moonglade, Moonglade didn't cast a single game. So what was Moonglade there? Like, he was always the last one to be asked on the panel about his opinion. So he never really said anything meaningful other than I totally agree with what that person said. Uh, which is really the only criticism we can really give to uh, the panel and the people chosen to be part of the event. Uh, Nathanius, I don't know if you want to discuss if you think it's irrelevant if uh, you have your two cents well, to give about it i mean it. i i have nothing i have nothing bad to say about andrew um mm-hmm. yeah, that, I, i'm not looking that, to take so a poop on him or anything so here's here's the thing here's the yes. thing and this, this should help clear things up a little bit first of all um going into it the talent lineup was set before the round of 16 just yes. as a super quick lay that down so you have jadong you have sue you have life you have enough Zerg players that it warrants having somebody, uh, you know, warrants having at least one person at your actual big fucking final event because you assume at least one of them is going to win their match. And, you know, a lot of people were thinking that, you know, okay, it should probably, you know, Jadong might be able to beat Bomber. It's like Sue, sh- you know, like Sue is a player that you, you like, well, yeah, Sue should be able to beat Tasia, you know, like 50 50 either way. Um, so Moonglade's like the best, he's the best, he's like the best choice that you're going to get. Um, as far as the skill compared and the experience doing the, the pro league, he's been commentating even, he's also, he's also cast games of the, of a lot of the players that were already, uh, that were going to be at BlizzCon or at least in the top 16. So that's not something that you can account for that you'll only have one Zerg, um, which obviously is limiting. But the other thing is the panel, the panel was there to not just, it's, was, it's not like the panel was there to recast the games. But they were, you know, Todd was also only on the panel. Yes, um, yes. Him and, I him, and, him and Todd were contracted as analysts for the event. That's why we had the expert desk to discuss and give. It, it's not just about them being there to cast Zerg games or cast Protoss games, but they can give us insight from perspectives other than, you know, the ones that we you know would normally have from the commentators. Yeah. And they were also more free to be biased because they didn't have to actually cast the games. Mm-hmm. But outside of, outside of that, there would have been potentially more for them to do um a lot of the a lot of the uh, expert desk segments were uh, cut down a little bit i think for i don't think it's any surprise that we were in a bit of a time rush considering how late we finished um but there was also a lot of like we'll be right back and no content was shown like well at some at some point or another it, it basically just comes down to what uh give it you know what they're comfortable with or the amount of time that they're trying to it's like because when when the technical difficulties come up, for example, obviously they didn't plan for it to happen. It, you know, we're not we have an indeterminate amount of time before it's mm-hmm. settled, and if, like you especially want to avoid situations like the first day when, um, like when I was casting with day nine, you know, and we actually we actually just sat there and talked for a straight like hour, right? So you, you, you we were able to use like the the analyst desk, but those guys also aren't required to be, be sitting at the desk during the games because they had come in at very specific moments. So throwing to them at like a moment's notice wasn't like always, um, but, always an option. So it's it's really it's really tricky. The scheduling yes. made it really difficult to give them as much time as I think we wanted to for them to like do their thing. But I don't I don't think that's fair. Like uh, it's the World Finals, right? They put in a lot of money. There's a lot of people. It's a big motherfucking stadium. Uh, you're obviously going to compare it to League of Legends, to Dota 2. There's actually the number one upvoted picture on Reddit is a, a comparing all 
the, all the finals and saying that esports doing really well in 2014. And if we compare the product, uh, you know, the international and the LCS World Finals, uh, it feels to me like you know you could have hired. Uh, maybe, you know, a girl or a guy, you know, clutch, uh, asking questions in the audience, like KC does for Dota 2. Uh, you could have had just a panel sit at the panel, uh, watching the game so they can just, you know, it's the final thing. Like, it's the final tournament. There should be zero downtime, and there's a lot to improve. Uh, you guys, obviously, you know, when you were actually doing the content, it was really good. But I feel like outside of that, it could have been a little better. Can we, Rifkin, do we agree? Nothing else. I'm not trying to throw you under the bus. I'm just doing... I, I'm I, just I, devil's advocating yeah. why certain things might have yeah. happened. Me too, as well, you know? I, I like you, Nate. Are we still friends? Sure. Yes, a smile. All right, I, just, I went. I, don't, I just don't want anybody to feel like, you know, like... Oh, it's like why would they why would they have him there when you know it's like there's nothing Zerg yeah, happening. No, you can't, no, yeah, you no. can't predict that because these things have to be set yeah. up so I far have, I feel games. bad for calling out Moonglade because I forgot that Todd didn't cast a single game either. So see, Wait, so, I would have not done that if <sighs> I remembered. I think one of the only things I want to bring up for this is kind of going on what Nate said about the whole no bias thing. Mm -hmm. Like sometimes, like people complain like, oh, these casters shouldn't be so biased. And sometimes like, I'll agree with that point. But there are times where you do need bias. You need to know exactly why that worked or did not work for a Zerg player. And you're not going to get a lot of that from someone who's just kind of, you know, sitting on the fence. Where someone like Moonglade can specifically say like, this didn't work because like, you know, we're missing this mechanic or something like that. So, I mean, it's, I, I kind of like that they were there. I know there's a lot of drama with this whole in control thing. To be honest, it is, I really like meeting in control too. He's a really cool dude. I didn't care that he wasn't there so much as like everyone else seemed to. Like, yes, it would have been nice for him to be there, but I really like that the analytical desk stayed analytical and it didn't get like off topic, I guess. Yeah, that's a very fair point. Uh, Rifkin has to cast the I am qualifier, so we're gonna have to rush things a little bit. Uh, MMA versus classic, just favorite game of the series if there's one. And uh, you know, were you expecting MMA to win, Caitlin? Um, even though the first time we did the SCV rush, he failed. Mm -hmm. I still like it. Still like pulling the boys. I think he did it twice in the series. Both of those. Was I expecting him to win? No, but after I saw his control in that game, I was expecting him to beat life. At least. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He, yeah. He played pretty solid. Nathanius. What's up? Favorite game, MMA Classic. Thoughts on the winner? Were you expecting MMA? MMA Classic was uh, was a pretty weird series for me because I thought Classic did a phenomenal job of preparing for Pult, but um, yeah, the the difference between the two of those the, the two players. At least MMA for me. and Bolt or MMA and Classic? Yeah, MMA and Bolt. Yeah. Uh, MMA seemed to have a much better grip on getting uh, things like the upgrades together and also made much better use of Widow Mines. Uh, Classic, uh, for reference, did not did not copy a single strategy that he used against Bolt in his series against MMA. And you could say that his builds were tailored for Bolt, but that also means that he wasn't, you know, in the weeks leading up to playing, you know, he had weeks to prepare for Bolt that he wasn't practicing to play MMA, and then you switch your style up completely because you know that MMA will expect it. And MMA played a much, uh, what seemed to be a much sharper late game because all Classic did to beat Pult was focus on shutting down the Doom drops, whereas uh, MMA made actually quite a few sexy plays, and I was, uh, I was actually really impressed with his TVP because uh, I was expecting something a little more inspiring from Classic. Okay. Rifkin, any quick thoughts? Uh, I really, I all my thoughts lie in the other semifinals. To be honest, I mean, classic was just I liked it. It wasn't super ridiculous, and either way, I don't know, just good series. You like any series that Protoss doesn't win, eh? Well, no, it's just yeah. I, it kind of those games. The thing is, like, there's not a lot of times where I'm like, okay, this is over ten minutes before it was over. Um, and aside from like the SCVs, like that's kind of how I felt it went for a little bit, but. Um, I don't know, all, all my all my things for like I want to say are all about Tasia and life because I thought that semifinals was better than the finals to be honest. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I yeah. keep thinking that was the finals and like <clears throat> now we're gonna talk about the finals. Life versus Tasia. Yeah, I think uh, I think Tasia winning would have been a greater storyline. But anyway, life versus Tasia. Um, Caitlin, favorite game thoughts on the winner? Were you expecting it? Uh, favorite game? I'm not sure. I'm like. I'm the person who always says that life gets really, really, really lucky. 
And Teja made, I think he made eight or nine Hellions that first game. And he probably, like, I know he did a Hellbat thing, but I wouldn't be surprised if he made them because he was playing against life. And he lost five of them. And I think he still ended up winning that game. But... Well, that's crazy. It was still kind of crazy. He lost five of them. And then on a, <laughs> a merry-go-round, he loses two Hellions. And then he loses the rest of his army. And before that happened, life was only making drones. And you can see, you could see that once his lings are all around his army, he just only makes lings from that point on. So, you know, Terran doesn't have any Hellions. And you kill the Marines too, you may as well just Bane bust. So, I don't know. I guess, I guess the proxy hatch on King Sejong was nice. Yeah. I like the proxy hatch on Overgrowth, to be honest. That's my favorite one. Because that one was, I, like, right next to the natural. Who puts a hatchery there? Like, I've seen all sorts of proxy hatcheries, but that was the one that caught me, like, what the hell? Well, that's what everyone's doing now. Like, Hyun did it. He put his oh, proxy hatch. Could you guys restart your cams, shot. please? So, uh, you appreciate your four-layer limit for this call. <laughs> that's, and Jadong uh, Jay Jay did it, too, against Ryang, the same spot on a box trot. And Life put his, like, outside of the natural on King Sejong as well. So yeah, no one can really do it straight up like Cats used to do it, unless... I know Life likes to do a proxy hatch in your natural if you 888 him, but he didn't see out Tejas 888, so I know it wasn't that counter. He was just planning on doing the proxy hatch. But yeah, usually you have to go a bit so, further now. I want to be Mr. Negative here for a second, though. Um, and this is going to be so ironic coming from Riffing, guys, because he's the shittiest caster in the world, I know. I didn't like the casting pair up for that one. Tejas and Life was a good set. I think Day9 and Kalaris are both good casters. <laughs> I didn't think... They went well together, though, was my problem. And I... Nate's got to take a second. <laughs> Look at this hater hitting. Okay. I really... Like, I was going to say, like, I wish someone like Nathaniel had been casting. Because I really didn't feel like we got the full spectrum of insight for, like, all the cool things that was happening. Like, Caitlin brought up the Hellions. Like, they were sitting there questioning the Hellions. I'm like, why? Why are you questioning the Hellions? Like, I, I mean, it's really nitpicky, I know. But, um... I, like, it was still a good cast. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be super negative here. I just got to think, like, for the semifinals, I would have loved to have seen, like, Nate or somebody else doing it was all. Um, about Overgrowth, though, I really liked that Tasia made, like, four bunkers. You know how a lot of people do, like, the honorable one bunker or one spine? But Tasia went all out. Made so many bunkers. And it still didn't yeah. help? Did he yell that game? Oh, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. on Overcook. He, he was that was the I game the flying I die all the time building shit tons of bunkers. Yeah. The flying marine on that one was like gotta be the highlight moment. <laughs> that spine gun just rips <laughs> it like 80 yards back. Like. Yeah? Um, I might catch it. Uh, so the f finals... Um, life winning very easily versus MMA 4-1. Uh, Caitlin, favorite game and obviously did you... You probably didn't expect life to win. Since you're such a the hater. Same thing. I don't know. On merry-go-round, um, not merry-go-round, Caitlyn Lena, as I like to call it. Oh, God. MMA, he had a Jesus. Viking that was just flying by life's third. He didn't, you know, check the drone saturation there. Uh, he just moved out onto the map. He had two tanks against life's zero, 0 Bane bus. Two tanks, and he moves out onto the map for no reason with like Marines and a tank, and life kills them all. Feel like you should have held that, and then in I don't know in some other games it just seemed like he was kind of out of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, moving down the ramp, I was just like, what? <laughs> yeah. It's like, yeah. man, he has everything. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like looking at this. I'm like, this is the perfect army. He has everything he could possibly need to defend this attack. Let's go down the ramp and lose everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh And he God. had a hellion to scout ahead of watching, him. Watching, watching this man. Oh. He only had uh, two Hellions, I think he was doing Bomber's Bill, two Hellion, two Widowmine. But you can still, that's still enough to scout ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> that game made me so upset because that is something like, I don't know. It's stuff like that that made me think like that Tasia should be able to do it. Because I don't think Tasia would ever move out like that. But no. MMA, it, and it's not to slight MMA, it's just he's that kind of guy. And that's why players like Life should be able to beat players like MMA. Do you think well, he forgot his third on merry-go-round? Because I'm, I like maybe it was like some weird specific build where you just go to command center and apply pressure forever. But there was something weird about it. Because I think he even only went four hellions, so he could have had the money maybe. I I think the thing a lot of it probably comes down to is it was said earlier, and I know because I asked him too. Like he didn't practice TVZ. You're not looking for those scouting patterns. You're not looking for, like, a, you're not thinking about things you would normally think about because you've just spent one week training, like, TVT exclusively, yeah. right? So, and, and as a, uh, just to, just to make sure in case anybody has, like, weird thoughts about that, just because you're playing StarCraft, like, it really, 
really doesn't do it justice. Like playing ladder is nothing to prepare for, you know, an opponent who has games that you can study. So for MMA to only practice playing the matchups that he thought he was going to play makes a lot of sense. And for him to have his mindset geared completely towards playing those matchups is totally reasonable because there's, I, I just don't think that there is any way that you should have expected life to be the guy that made it all the way to the finals, considering how stacked that bottom of the bracket is. So, um, for MMA to not be practiced against Zuri was unfortunate. I can't really say it's unexpected, but it definitely didn't work. It definitely made it a lot more difficult for him to win that series, even no matter how good shape he's in. Yeah. And the thing is, too, like, I've seen, I think I've witnessed, I've personally witnessed MMA do really dumb and amazing things. Like, there was a game he played against Hyun on Foxtrot. He, he didn't even, he forgot his upgrades entirely. Like, Hyun's on plus two. He hasn't even started plus one. Like, people choke. From time to time it happens but then there's other moments where mma is just like a god on fire so I mean, it's it's really hard to be like man mma just sucks at tvz and this 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 series was a good example of that like it's just not the case yeah but uh awkward sounds aside Desro, i think hey, i gotta go man unless did we lose Desro? <laughs> can i talk about Tuja versus life again really fast <laughs> yes go for it okay <laughs> so when when Teja had that like that proxy hatch is natural before when Hyanna did it to him, he only scanned to get rid of the creep tumors and everyone was like, Why don't you build a Raven? And of course we're all like, Well a Raven requires a tech lab and you gotta get your Medivacs out and it's all this production, uh ah, it's expensive and it's slow. But he didn't make a Raven right away, he made one against life on King Sushang. I, I didn't see the games. I'm sorry, Caitlin, to let you down. Uh, <laughs> so my mic was muted, and what I was trying to do was find a question for uh, the people, because I'm trying to be a man of the people, because I feel bad, because we got so many questions, but we're not going to have time to a answer a single question. And this is a terrible turn of events. I feel like such a jerk. I need to find a question. Um, Nathanius, when are you shaving next? You give me some time to find a good question. Um, I don't know, man. I don't have any dates coming up, and I don't know if I care either way. So probably, probably not until December. Maybe I'll trim it. I don't know. That's a pretty bad question, Desra. I'm sorry. No, it's not. I like Went that. I'm interested. Yeah, you're was... interested. Yeah, well, I'm actually interested. I was gonna say winter is coming, and therefore you shouldn't shave. So you're, it's warmer. But you live in Cali, so it doesn't apply. I'm about to. Sp I'm spending my winter in Sweden, so. <laughs> Well, there, there you go, man. I'm just trying to help a brother I'm, out. I have a flight on, like, Thursday or Friday or something. <sighs> so, yeah, I'm probably not going to shave because it'll be cold. All right. Just so I'm a man of the people and I say that we answered a question. Any chance of a foreigner or two competing in the GSL next year, Nathanius? Not that I'm aware of. Probably not. Nope. Rifkin. Trying to compete, maybe, but not going to happen. Right, like I'm trying to think of someone who's like a viable chance. Like, Sorry. I, I, like I almost want to be like state, right? Like, but he's coming back. Like, he said he was coming back. Yeah, I mean that's the... the thing. Yeah, exactly. So I mean, I, I can't think of anyone else um, off the top of my head. Uh, there are people who are good enough, but it's the idea of moving over there that's the limiting factor. So I, I would say no as well. <laughs> All right, last question. What uh, I didn't answer that. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, Desro, what the <laughs> fuck, man? I'm sorry, Caitlin. Any All chance? Right. Are you gonna be competing? Um. Well. I believe that this entire time, well, we know we saw him at BlizzCon, you know, playing Heroes or whatever. But I think that Nanny was getting Korea this entire time, and yeah, he will win GSL next season for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I ha I hung out with Nanny the other day after the event. That's hilarious. I I went to hug him because he did like a mono battles in my stream before or something like that. Like he came in with Moro. I went to hug him and it was like this half hug, and I was like, it's okay, you can hug me. Then I, like, went for more of it, but it was kind of like this weird half hug. Well, he just wanted more. It was his way of getting some more. <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, this is a good question, actually. And, uh, Rifkin, could you organize a few uh, Legacy of the Void economy model mod show match? That could be cool. Maybe... Um, you could invite me for once. That'd be you, great. You need yeah, to I have try a plans, or good I enough some good prize players. pool. I would be, I'd be interested in doing. <laughs> we could have. Um, I wanted to do it, but like, you need to put up enough money that your players will actually Dude, try we, to play a game before your tournament, so that you don't have should, the shittiest players ever. We should fucking do some sort of Kappa Star like Bay Street TV crossover, man. Like, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Let's do it up. 
I thought, but no, seriously, I when I read about the mod change on Reddit, it was like during the event. I thought it sounded really cool. I know I brought it up to several other people. Totally something I would be willing to consider. But right now, I have no idea what our schedule looks like beyond the finishing of 32 Boys 1 Cup. So everything's up in the air for me right now. I am just super scatterbrained, and I've got no scheduling laid out for this month properly at all. I'm just trying to focus on wrapping up this one tournament we've been doing for too long. <laughs> Yes, that makes sense. All right, uh, last question. Uh, the skill difference between Korean and foreigners is already quite distinguished. Disti distinguish. Top 16 Koreans in finals. With the higher skill cap, will we see more foreigners fade away in the shadow of the Koreans? Nathanius. Nope. There's going to be more tournaments next year. Just wait. I'm certain of it. Mm -hmm. Nathanius knows something, guys. He knows something. Alright, that wraps up the show. Um, Caitlin, what are you up to next? Uh, we, we know you're in uh, the great USA right now, but what are you up to next? What are your plans and stuff like that? I'm probably just going to keep streaming this month and then go back to Canada and then stream more. And I'm always doing roleplay stuff with JP too. So, nice. you know, whatever. I post it to my Twitter. I gotta, I gotta go, Desmond, man. Yeah, well, I mean, just what are you up to next, Graham? Uh, just fishing 32 boys one cup. But uh, I just want to, can I do like some shout outs real quick? Because I got a couple I want to do. Yeah, sure. Okay, I want to give a big shout out to Zervia uh, for helping us with everything BlizzCon related. She was the nicest fucking person to meet. Um, her and Sion are pretty much the people who help make sure the StarCraft community has heard about things. Uh, yep. Sion as well was a really cool dude. Uh, meeting them in person was probably one of the bigger highlights of my weekend. Uh, of course, getting to see Desiree again was really cool. We saw him in Toronto. Caitlin. You know, we didn't get to say goodbye, so goodbye, Caitlin. <laughs> uh, some Nate guy, I don't know, he was like, I think he was a cast or something. I ran into him a few times. Um, but really, everyone I met at the event was really cool. I do want to give a big shout out to like pretty much everybody that was like Base Street TV related, to all my WoW friends I got to meet there. Uh, D Machine held this barbecue, it was really cool. I just had a blast of a time, and I couldn't have done it without a lot of the people who are probably watching the show right now. So thank you guys so much. Um, and if you do want to watch Bay Street TV, I'll be covering the IEM qualifiers here like as soon as I hang up the call. First match I'll be casting is Scarlet vs. Peely Peely ZVP on twitch.tv slash Bay Street TV. Good job. Nathanius, what are you up to next? I'm going to Germany on Thursday or Friday. They're doing my flight. I actually totally need to get my info. But yeah, I'm going to go to Home Story Cup. Um, I'm not going there to cast, which means you will see me probably obliterated on their streams. I am looking forward to it. <laughs> and then I'm going to be in Sweden until November, uh, December 7th, uh, doing Fragbite Masters StarCraft II tournament. So, yeah, I'm going to be streaming from Sweden. I'm going to be living with the Muslim. So nice. you can come watch some oh, hungover Counter-Strike slash StarCraft streams. It'll be... It'll be a blast, and I'm going to stream after this on twitch.tv slash Nathanius. And uh, shout out to my sponsors at Cyberpower PC who are giving me the computer to stream from when I'm in Sweden. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, big thanks to everyone who watched. I want to thank uh, some of my uh, viewers for donating to sending for sending me to BlizzCon. That was really nice of you guys. I want to give a big shout out to DHQK in chat for letting me crash in his room and actually taking the floor instead of uh, sharing the bed with me. I wanted to be the big this little spoon actually, but uh, I guess it wasn't happening. Uh, and uh, yeah, no, really, uh, you know, we have we sold three Remax shirts so far, and uh, it's really grateful. Thank you everyone for coming on, Caitlin. Uh, Graham, Nathanius, Scarlet, Suppy, and Fuckhawk. And we'll see you guys next week for more remakes. <laughs> I love you all. Have a good day.